Hello. Hey, I'm Jack Rush. I'm here today with uh, Steven Barnacle from Stronghold Games, and it's Sunday at uh, Essen. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm awake. I'm awake. Really, it's okay. Really? I'm yeah. just going to ask you, where do you get the energy from? Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's, I guess it's really uh, adrenaline, right? I mean, yeah. it is a really tiring show, the most tiring. I mean, I take meetings all day. Thank God I have this great team of yeah. Knights of the Stronghold out there being able to demo the games for me because I could never do that. And of course, all the business that we have to do here. So it's been a fantastic show. You work on adrenaline, great business. I can see you, have, you are great at organizing everything. I met you too, the other day, and it was a blast. So yeah, I, I, I have to compliment you on this uh, effort today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I mean, th these guys, you're talking about the Knights, uh, the, my demo team, I and mean, they do a, such an amazing job. We, we try to treat them as good as we can. And, you know, that dinner that you, know, you came to, with, it's just a fun time so we can all bond together and, you know, have a couple of beers maybe and uh, have dinner together. So it was a great time. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you have background from uh, Wall Street, right? It's IT, IT for a Wall Street firm, but I do have a business background in yeah. general, education background. And, uh, I've been working with the business yeah. and a lot of things. Sure. So, uh, what made your interest to focus more on board games? Um, simply, I was a, a geek from the beginning to the end. I am a gamer, yeah. true and true. <laughs> mm. I mean, we just you know, and you know, I wanted to bring the passion that I have for gaming with my business sense, yeah. you know, to possibly create a company. And this was back in. You know, I was watching the industry in the early 2000s and seeing these small companies pop up and I'm like, oh, some of them are not run, it didn't look like they were run so well. I figured I could bring a good bit of business sense plus my gaming knowledge to the industry. Strong Games was born in 2009. Yeah. And you started with the Survive, I think you remember. Uh, it was Code 777 and then Survive right after that. Survive Escape from Atlanta is still my biggest selling game. Yeah. I sell more copies of that year after year. So it's every, that's unheard of in this industry. Right? Every year you sell more than the previous year. Everything is like, you know, it comes out of the gate and then it's a slow yeah. fade out. This keeps going up because it's such an approachable game. And it really, you know, having that as a, as a marquee part of the, yeah. you know, the brand is a really good thing. It was a great start for you. Yeah, yeah it surely was. That's the year. This year? Yep. Uh, you had a great game coming out. Um, had a lot of great games coming yeah, out. One specifically was sold out like this. Like this. I assume yeah. you mean Terraforming Mars. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of nice to have a game that's like was pinned at number one on the hotness list on Board Game Geek yeah. for three weeks, and it was always in the top one to five since before Gen Con even. The buzz was great on it. Yeah, we sold out. I got shorted even, which was sad by the printer, on the number of copies that they were able to deliver here. You know, a production thing, they could only do so many. So, but we still sold hundreds of them, and uh, Schwerkraft, the German publisher, sold hundreds of them, and Frick's Games sold hundreds of them. So there's a lot of uh, games out there now for gamers. Once they play that game, they're really gonna love it. We're still demoing it, because we want to keep the buzz going on the game. So yeah, it course, just looks great and plays fantastic. Yeah. So what other games do you want to talk about? Not all, not all. <laughs> Can't talk about them all, but... Yeah, just one. You know, one, just one? Yeah. Great Western Trail we'll mention. Okay. Great Western Trail, one of the highlights of my convention, I met Alexander Fister, the designer. Yeah. This is a co-publication with Edgar Spieler, and uh, you know, so they dealt with the production, the artwork and all that, but I had never met Alexander Fister, and he's so red hot. Guy's won two Kenner Spieler Jars in a row, Deutsche Spiel Prize. Yeah. He's such a great designer. Obviously, I put him in my great designer series, um, and that was a wonderful thing. And this game is another masterpiece by him. That it's that big, you know, meaty euro that everybody, you know, the, that that segment of the market really demands. You're taking your cattle and you're driving them from Texas all the way to Kansas City to load them onto the trains. Uh, lots of variability in the game because it's very different buildings that you're going to build. It's it's another one of his hits, and I think we're going to have a lot, a lot of buzzes. Now on the Geek right now, it was like, it was like number one and two, Terraforming Mars and the Great Western Trail on the hotness list. And on the Geek buzz here at the show, Great uh, Terraforming Mars is one, Great Western Trail is four, and Fabled Fruit is number seven. So I got three in the top ten, which is staggeringly awesome for us. So yeah, yeah really, really pleased by that. So what does it entail to be a great designer series in Stronghold? Well, I, I put people in the series based on their their credibility, the, the awards that they've won, their, what they've contributed to the hobby. The first game there was uh, Porto Nigra by uh, Wolfgang Krama and Mikael Kiesling, and they have won multiple Spiel de Jars. So obviously these, this is a design team that needs to be in there. 
504 by Freedom and Freeze. So you can see the, the, the quality of the designers that we're putting in there. Um, if, if, if somebody like that, if I get a game by somebody like that, we put them in the series. It's, a, it's, a, it's an homage, it's a recognition of what they've contributed to the hobby. It doesn't do anything, the games aren't linked or anything like that, yeah. but I'm, I, I think of designers as the rock stars of the industry. Yeah. I might be a silly personality, <laughs> like you know, me and Tom Basil fighting. Yeah. I'm a silly, good promoter of games, but those guys are the rock stars. You know, those guys are the guys who you should say, thank you so much for bringing that game out and stronghold in my catalog, even which is even better. But you know, they they are the backbone. They they give us the products that we can then bring out. Yeah, I actually looked up for self promoting in the, the dictionary. There's a picture of you. Of oh, self promoting. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Ha ha. <laughs> so, which one designer do you want to have in the great design series? Well, okay. I mean, that's a very fair question. I have a passion for Martin Wallace games. Martin's a friend of mine. And I know that I will have a Martin Wallace game in this catalog. It's like I, at some point. I'm not signed to anything. I meet with him every time we get together. He's just so busy with various things and he's moving and things like that. But it's gonna happen. I love Martin Wallace's games, and he's he's definitely definitely great design this year. Yeah, you can see that. Yes. Yeah, well, I think that's all the time we have. So that's we'll about it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Hey. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks.